well struck. Welcome to PSN's presentation of the fabulous fourth cricket test in Kingston, Jamaica. It really was a defining moment uh, in the annals of Australian cricket. David, a bit of a roller coaster of emotion. They lost the third test in under three days in Trinidad, but suddenly at Kingston, Jamaica, it's within reach, a great victory within four days. Yes, it could be, because Australia goes to that series one all and a chance to take home the Frank Worrell Trophy for the first time since 1975-76 here in Australia and the first time since 1973 in the West Indies. Well, as I said, the series is locked at one all after three tests for the fourth and final deciding test match. Let's have a look back and see why the series is at one all. 28 years after his death, the spirit of Frank Worrell lives in the hearts of the international cricket community and in the heads of the elite cricketers of the West Indies and Australia as they continue their struggle for supremacy in a fascinating series. To their unbridled delight, the Australians won a famous victory in Barbados, the West Indies being twice bowled out for less than 200 for the first time in the Caribbean. Then came the cursed, frustrating, unseasonal rains in arid Antigua. The dark clouds finally cleared for the West Indies in Trinidad when a focus Richie Richardson was demonstrably in charge and Kirtley Ambrose regained fitness, form and favour. Then the caravan moved on to Jamaica. We would have preferred at this stage to have been, um, like I said, two, two nil up or something like that, but uh, as it is, it's one all and it's down to the wire and it's do or die in this test match and um, we're going to make sure we do. They're always very mentally tough. They keep you playing. They've got good fast bowlers who uh, keep you on your toes all side all the time. You've got to be mentally tough and mentally aggressive. And uh, hopefully we can do that over the next five days. While most batsmen battle to find form, Brian Lara, the Prince of Trinidad, showed flashes of his genius against Shane Warne, who for once functioned rather than flourished. And all attention was focused on Glenn McGrath, a young man seeking to establish his identity in the international arena and Kirtley Ambrose battling to regain touch and credibility. And despite the drama of the disputed Lara catch at Barbados, Australia's hopes lie principally with Stephen Waugh, their only batsman in true form. That went, that really went. And Healy, of course, who's got experience here from 1991, one of only five players who have, at, at least at test match level, taking off and lunging. Yeah! And he's gone! Brilliantly caught by Blewett. Brilliantly caught, throwing himself. A sensational start for the Australians. And blew it in tight at silly point. Just hurling himself and taking a magnificent catch and rifle is struck. Williams is gone. We're just seeing the replay here. Poor rifle banging the ball into the surface. Bounces quite a bit, catches the glove. And there's Greg Blewett diving away to his left. It's a great catch and a great start for Australia. just in front a little bit shorter but inside that and that'll go for four you always get one or two four balls from Ben and Julian it would seem one for six And the extensive excitement and the new stand, the disco stand, being promoted as Mound Mania. Mound Mania is the mood on the, the Mound stand here. Play that with fair control.
to the replay here. Just nice soft hands, just gliding it down through the vacant third man area. And uh, the way this outfield is, that's always going to be four runs. That's a glorious shot back, placing it perfectly. This is where Julian so often does stray. He's just so quick on his feet, just anything that's just slightly offline or length, he's onto like a shot. And for a small bloke, he hits the ball unbelievably firm. And that just races away four runs. Just great footwork and just gives it everything. There he is at 254. High scoring batsman in the series. And Steve War is not far behind him in the 220s. But they're the only two who have topped 200 in a series which has been dominated by the bowlers. Oh. There's the famous Lara hip clip. How well is he seeing them, this young man? To play that to the second ball from McGrath. Characteristic of him in full flight, the hip clip. Well, I only dream about playing this shot. Just awesome stuff. He's sort of, uh, it's a trademark shot of his now. This is a great track, and uh, anything that's going to be slightly short, Brian Lara is going to jump on. Sliced away off the edge. Didn't go where he intended. But four runs all the same, one for 34. So in case you wondered where that ball had gone, there's the answer. A typical Richie Richardson square slash, but there was the outside edge, not off the middle. Typical West Indies uh, shot there, particularly from Richie. We're just starting to get the groove in the second innings. Well, that asked for it. Magnificently struck. It was short, it was wide, it was four. Well, Tony, that's a shot. He's played some shots today that it's worth travelling 30 hours in a plane to see. He's very good hit, hitting it through mid wicket, but what about that? He's just sort of short, and he said, I'll have some of that. And he's just smashed it through cover point. Those, these shots are just you dream about and creates a chance for you to make a really big innings. Beautiful wrist work and beautiful timing. Four runs. Well, you just get on this guy's legs, and he's just going to nail you. He's, he's just got so, so much timing. He just didn't try to hit it too hard, get it past Booney. And it's just gone for four. So that's my point, is whether you should just be too attacking here and just try and drive Brian's put four shots up. Magnificent stroke. No effort, whatever. Just forward and hitting through the line. Another four to Lara. Magnificent shot, Tony. If any kids want to look at how to play an off drive off a leg spinner, have a look at that. You can tell where the ball is going to where his foot was, was pointing towards. And that is just a magnificent shot. Dabs it for the 50, and the crowd go nuts. A wonderful inning so far from Brian Lara. A cameo 50, and you wouldn't see too many better half centuries, might yet, with a man coming in at the second delivery of the game. Very composed 50 there by Brian Lara. Didn't look out of sorts at any stage. there and whacked that through the fence for four 
and a man who would love to have been able to play that shot, Alan Border. Yes, the condition is very much in favour of batting at the moment, and Brian Lara is looking very ominous. Just beautiful shot on the rise. That is a class shot from a class player. Just out of reach of Julian, the frustration. McGrath dug that in. Got inside of it, didn't get it, he got it high on the bat. The single it gives him his 300th run for the series. It's a good effort from all concerned there. Bowler digging the ball in. False stroke from Brian Lara, and unfortunately, Brendan Julian couldn't get back. Very athletic man. But uh, things are running Brian Lara's way this morning. Just goes to show he didn't get that as he liked. Slater couldn't make the interception. And the speed of the outfield, that's four more. Just dragged down slightly. Brian Lara probably didn't hit that perfectly well, but uh, just, just shows you how quick this outfield is and how good the wicket is playing. Leaning forward and great embrace. And he's gone. He has walked. What an astonishing moment. Liebenberg didn't make any reaction. Certainly Warren and Healy were sure. And Lara has walked. One of the more unanimated type dismissals. Uh, you see the ball pitching, just catching the inside edge of the bat, flying up. Good reactions from Ian Healy and Brian Lara walks. Uh, would have been interesting to see uh, what Carl Liedenberg's reaction would have been. Oh, that is a glorious shot from Adams. Advancing to Warren. Placing it beautifully. No chance for Slater. Here we see Jimmy just advancing down the track, getting to the pitch of the ball and hitting that very firmly through the mid-off region. There's a glorious shot from Adams. Oh, and doesn't his fans just love it? Class shot by Jimmy Adams. It's not one of his great strengths to hit it past the ball. He likes to hit it through the covers normally. But here he is, he just nice and straight and hit through it. And this type of wicket, it's just a beauty. He knows how good it is. It's his turf here. Straight to Slater. Short. Just miscued. You'll be very disappointed with that, will Jimmy Adams? The Australians delighted. Each time the West Indies threaten to just to take it away, they've got the capacity to just strike. Yes, a soft dismissal here for Jimmy. Drops one in and just got, gets it high on the bat and a little bit late and Slater makes up that little error made in the slips and that is the type of dismissal they wanted. The West Indies now are three for 131. Lovely shot from Hooper. And no better way to fix your timing than a square cut hit perfectly between the gully and the point field from before. Very good shot that by Carl Hooper. He tried that same shot earlier on in this, this very same over, but didn't quite time it. On this occasion, he hit it perfectly. Plain 
stroke. And the boundary straight down the ground is short enough that it can reach it for a boundary. So four runs to Richardson, that brings up his half century. appreciating a great captain's knock from Richie Richardson. He's battled hard for his runs. Play a very solid innings here for his team. Gone full blew it. That really came like a shot from a gun. Just stops inside the boundary. They'll come back for three. Typical Richie Richardson stroke. Rich is in form. This is the shot that gets him a great number of runs. And when you give him any width, he just gives it the kitchen sink. And Greg Blewett knows all about that there. That was coming quite rapid. And that's the second one that's gone to Blewett. Perhaps not the ideal bounce for him. And it was struck hard. He yes, to be a bit disappointed with this effort. Uh, the last one he could be excused for, and for this particular shot here, hit very firmly through the point region, but just beaten by, well, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt, just a little bit of a bad bounce there. Yes, Mike, it's a very good move for Mark Taylor, I believe, to put Mr. Mark War on, commonly known as Junior, as he is the last twin born. All called Pretty Boy. And you can tell with a face like that. It's gone a long way. It's over the top at six. He's not afraid to drop it short. Which is not afraid to get inside it either. Magnificent shot. What a play there by Richie. Used the right arm, uppercut, hit it. Right in the screws. Must have travelled at least oh 75 yards. As I said, he hit one out of the out of the ground last time. That's great camera work there. Pick that up. As only Hooper can. Hooper, of course, has become Warren's nemesis. He picks it up so quickly. Well, what a shot. He's been watching our spin vision camera. And if you can just watch the back of the hand, it comes out at the back of the hand. And watch the seam going the other way. And a little bit of frustration, though, creeping in. But it's a good chance for Brendan Gillian to pick a wicket up here. And I just think he's just starting to hit his straps again, Michael. You're right. He has hit his straps. Caught by Wall, driving away. He picked that perfectly, Dean. Driving away from his body, a good bowling change by Taylor. Hooper again, fails when he seemed to be set. Playing away from his body, Mark War. Perhaps the finest catches in the world, the finest hands in the world, and he's taken it effortlessly. Well, the left hand is angled here, and he's just gone for a big wide shot, and he has got great hands, this guy, I tell you. Fantastic catch. And again, Carl Hooper gets out softly. Four wickets for 188. It's a handsome start for Arthurton. Over-pitching. Arthurton with his reach. A lovely shot. Well, this guy feeds off adrenaline. Puts to the pitch the ball away. His toe is pointing towards where he wants to hit it, and the elbow through. You can tell where guys want to hit it from where their foot is, their front foot. And it's just a magnificent shot. What a great start for him here. And there is a great drive. Using his feet. He hasn't hit it as sweetly as we'd like for much of the day, but he'd be delighted with that. And so are the crowd. 
This was a very good shot here by Rich Richardson. For the first occasion in quite some time, we have seen Shane Warne attacking Rich Richardson on that line outside the off stump, and Rich Richardson using his feet beautifully there. High, long, handsome, into the new stand. As we've seen Arthurton launch into Warren on a couple of occasions during this series. That's a very big blow, high over long off, into the stand that has become the Valentine stand. And he hit it on the offside, inside out. Very good shot. He's gone, outside the off stump, edged, around the wicket. Arthurton goes to McGrath. The West Indies lose their fifth wicket for 220. And once again, a batsman who is seemingly set has been dismissed. Well, he's a little bit anxious to try to get on the front foot here. McGrath realised that on the front foot, not quite to the pitch of the ball, and a really good catch to Ian Healy, diving in front of him on the, to his left. And that's a great wicket for Glenn McGrath. And West Indies are in a little bit of trouble, a five for 220. Classic Richie Richardson, that'll take him to 99. Then McGuire just string a bit there. I've seen Richie Richardson play this shot so many times before. One to go. That's it. out and that's out yes it is tending to whack the ball around behind square leg across the line and again an undisciplined last ball shot well we have been talking about the tail enders trying to stay with the batsman this is not the shot that was required at this stage the ball pitched straight went straight and would have hit straight on mid stump that's out as umpire Buckner has signaled. It's seven for 250 the West Indies. And Richie Richardson has faced only 16 balls since he got to that landmark, that century. This is his 17th. Ah! Big shout, that's out. So, a new ball for Australia has taken two wickets already and it's only five deliveries old and the end of a wonderful innings from the West Indian captain stuck on a hundred and just couldn't get off it well as I was saying he wasn't on strike too often and then that certainly was plum again pitching just outside off storm which Richards not coming a long way forward end of an excellent innings for his team eight for 251 the West Indies in the air, will David Boone get to it, he will and he won't drop that so Steve Waugh has done it again the new ball, three wickets in, three overs Courtney Walsh was completely deceived by that delivery from Steve Waugh, he had seen Steve Waugh ball quite a few quick short balls to Courtney Ambrose and went on his back foot slow delivery and he just scooped it up in the air caught on the onside by David Bowe it's nine down for 254 well he certainly laid that onto that one hammered back past the bowler that 
that would have to be one of the best of the day. Any of the batsmen who preceded him would have been happy with that one. And for a number 11, well, that was one for the book. Tempted Yorker from Glen McGrath, and Kenny Benjamin gets a good piece of that one. Excellent straight drive. Four more runs. That's the end of the, the innings. Good catch by Healy, high to his right. And it's all over. A rifle picks up the last wicket. The West Indies are all out for 265, with Benjamin out caught by Healy off a rifle for five, leaving Ambrose six. And no wonder they're smiling. It's been a good day for the Australians. Once again, the low scoring series continued with just Richie Richardson scoring a century, the first century of the series. Brian Lara, another cameo performance for 65, but after that, it wasn't too much joy for the West Indies. Just 265, and again, they failed to bat 90 overs, which is a full day's play. For Australia, the wickets are shared as they had been all series. Rifle and Julian with a new ball. McGrath, surprisingly, again, not taking the new ball, but Warren and Moore did a bit of damage in the middle with two wickets apiece. So Australia has to chase 265, and they'd like to get a big lead. So let's see how Australia did in that chase of 265. Kurt Lee Ambrose is going to start the West Indies bowling. Australian captain Mark Taylor will take strike as we get ready for the first ball of day two. Australia with a West Indies score of 265 already on the board, now going after it. Big crowd in already, and here's the first ball of the day. change in the pitch of course there's a bit of wear on it from the bowler's foot marks there running in the danger area a few cracks looks as if he's batting on a late stump guard there well hit beautifully struck very confident in position very early and four runs from the time it left the back In the air, lobbed just over the bowler's head. Well, they haven't got a man in that position. But the hook shot was on again. Lucky to get away with it. I think we see here he's hit this right on the cue of the bat. Very, very fortunate to get away with that. taken what a magnificent catch by Jimmy Adams remarkable a while ago about the quality of the catching in this series and there has been none better than that. Mark Taylor can feel aggrieved. This is an absolute freak catch. Mark Taylor has absolutely hammered that. That is unbelievable. And he's 101st test now of course. That's what he's done for the series so far. Below average series for him but it's been a below average series for everyone century coming in the test match in Antigua. Hundred test match in Port of Spain. And there's the overall average. He's declared man of the match. for that if you're a fieldsman that is a lovely lovely on drive David Boone is very very good at those on drives straight down the pitch on the on the side of the wicket and you could see that ball wasn't on the leg side at all but was heading towards the leg stump and he just played it 
and a nice straight bat very comfortably down to long on we have now two slips in place there they are first and second slip lara and hooper put a big gap to that man at gully and the mid on is just out of your picture on the right there he is plug, plugging that gap richard richardson Wide about to them. Great piece of fielding because both Australian batsmen started to go. And the left hand was out. That wasn't really a ball to be driven. That ball was nowhere near driving length. And there it is. The single to David Boone takes him second on the list. They are good statisticians. They are aware of David Boone's statistics and the fact that he's now second in the list of Australian batsmen. It's in the air. There's a man down there. In fact, a misfield and gone for four. David Boone is the man the West Indies have targeted all summer as perhaps Australia's most pivotal player following the retirement of Alan Border. First series that Australia has contested against the West Indies since 1978 with Captain Grumpy not playing. But David Byrne is the man that reminds the West Indies at least needs to be dismissed. He's had a go, and I think he's achieved just that. He has. So Boone's not too pleased. And as the umpire calls drinks, the West Indies celebrate. Well, David Boone isn't too happy at all. It's obvious he wasn't too happy when he saw the finger go up. I'm not too sure if he was disappointed with the shot that he played or with the fact that he has been given out. We'll have to take a very close look at this to see exactly what happened. It was a very uncharacteristic shot from David Boone at any rate. You hardly see David Boone hooking. Let's have a close look at this. Short ball from Curly Ambrose. Let's have a look. Well, if that hit anything, it seems as if it hit the helmet. That's probably why David Boone was a bit disappointed. It's two for 50. It's going to be a... A great test of Mark Waugh's character and strength now to resist Kirtley Ambrose. And that was predictable, very predictable. Mark Waugh played that well, but he is going to be in for a very, very torrid time. Mr Ambrose just saying good morning, Mark. a glorious shot that's characteristic of Mark Waugh in full flight Australians will be encouraged by that fantastic shot that's one of his strengths he has made a 200 against the West Indies playing for New South Wales just rocks on the back foot and just pumps it through backward point and as you said Mike I'm quite amazed that Dunrage isn't in the gully he's had a point but maybe I think he had a sore thumb a turn of ball I'm sorry Four. It's all happening here. Michael Slater does, is not frightened to take these guys on. I admire the guys' courage. We try to really shell this one. We've got it high on the bat and straight over the wicket keeper's head. It's probably the best place to hit these guys. Straight off the helmet, well. There you go. Just in front of Adams, lunging again magnificent reactions again but he had to go forward and to his left 
but he's in such touch at the moment one senses he can do it well he's tried to work that one around the leg side and just to his credit he made something out of nothing he just bounced in front of him in the air Lara takes it beautifully always going to happen the way Michael Sater was playing this morning. Chance in his arm once again. Short ball. Bit top edgeish. Brian Lara moving fantastically to his right. Takes a superb catch which is starting to become regulation for this series. The end of Michael Slater at 27. Australia 3 for 73. There's no prize for guessing uh, the sort of welcome Stephen War is going to get at the crease. A lot of short pitch stuff with those blokes in close waiting for the pop chance. Not to be phased the West Indies aggression this morning. They're really in this match. It's gone very fine and gone for four. Pressure will be on straight away for Mark War. He's got the leg gully, the short leg in. He's got the short cover or distance silly mid off. So the pressure is on Mark War. The sways inside it, so it's an incredibly intense time for the Australian team. And if ever Australia has need the the brothers war to perform this is the moment encouraging sign for the Australians curtly unbelievably sloppy again in the field that's a lovely shot that's the shot of the one Australian batsman who's been consistently in touch. Well, I said before, don't give Steve War any room outside of stump, because that's what happens to you. A glorious shot, the square drive. Majesty in that, majesty. Well, Mark says, well, Steve, if you can play that shot, I can too. Just gave the War Brothers a bit of room. Didn't try to hit it too hard. But the timing and the poise and a very good effort in the field there. But again, it's gone for four. And this is one of the problems that Benjamin has. He bowls a couple of good ones, but at the same time, he just doesn't get his line right. And good players like these two fellas will jump on it. Well, no third man again, and he's letting the pace of the ball do the work. And it would have been a boundary for any other man chasing it, but that man there. And Arthur uh, Moore received the applause of the crowd, and so will Mark Waugh for his half century. A very good half century to Mark Waugh. The Australian fans there pretty pleased. And Mark Waugh about a third of the way as to where he wants to be. He's put it down. Well, poor Courtney Brown will not be feeling too happy about that. That was the breakthrough, and the new West Indies keeper has dropped what really should have been a regulation chance. Got both clubs to it. So Stephen War pushing outside that up stump, and that ball fairly flew through to the keeper, but one that you would expect him to hang on to. So we're just catching a good outside edge and that 
just rubs salt in the wounds. I suppose something had to had to give. It's a great shot through the cover point area. Something had to give with this fielding. For once he's alert, and for once he's hit the Trinity. Quick single taking, Curly got onto it low, the agility of a guy, obviously he's made it pretty easily in, but the stumps just jumped out everywhere. It's a glorious drive from War, from Stephen. Well fielded, but there's his 50. His fourth half century for the series. Acknowledges the crowd. The Australians dancing there. Greg Lewitt would be as relieved, I think, as anything that he's had that little extra time to compose himself. And this has been a wonderful performance by Steve War. Had only played two test matches in the Caribbean before this series, despite playing more than 70 times for his country. And he really has proved himself. Beautiful worker in trouble here. Went to the wrong end. Did Chandler Paul, but his reactions were just sensational. And again, the two wars in trouble, running. But that is magnificent work by Chandler Paul. Three for 203. This is the highest partnership in the series, beating the 124 by Brian Lauer and Carl Hooper in Bridgetown. It's a great distinction for the War Brothers. It's the toughest challenge in the West Indies is to, to play in Savannah Park. They've met the challenge admirably. And this time it's beyond Chander Paul. He made a desperate dive, but not even his young eyes and young legs could reach that. Three for 208. That's well hit. Tremendous blow. Way over mid wicket. Got under it from the time that left the bat, and you heard the sound. You know where it was going to go. What a magnificent shot. Hit it over Cowie corner. Deep mid wicket on one knee and really gave it some didn't try to over hit it but he will not be on 99 any longer his eighth test century for mark war applause from the australian players and from the spectators around the ground, it's been a fine and very important innings, chanceless by Mark War. And he and his brother Steve have pulled Australia out of some difficulty when there were 72 for three before the break. And here are a couple of Australians trying to get around the ground to congratulate him. And quite rightly sent back by the constabulary. That's what he's trying to say. He's got another stick on the on the thigh man, stick man. He's played marvelously well. He said he wanted to put one on today. And it's a fabulous effort for him. Jamaica is the biggest of the islands which comprise the West Indies cricket team. That's Montego Bay on the north coast. A very famous tourist resort. Kingston, where Sabina Park is located, is on the south coast. And we got there pretty quickly. So here is Mark War now on his even 100 to face Winston Benjamin. And in the commentary box, David Hooks and Alan Border. Thanks, Tony, and a wonderful moment for that man there. And here's his thigh pad. 
and a little stick man gets added every time he makes a century. That's on his thigh pad. The ones with double heads are the two uh, double centuries. They're not Tasmanian stick men. They represent his double hundreds. There they are, the men of the moment. Stephen Roger War and Mark Edward War. Born four minutes apart. Now in their approaching their 30th birthday, having their finest hour in the test team. This is only their second century stand. Umpires conferring. With their light meters. Well, Steve Buckner knows the ground very well. He's a Jamaican, he's on home territory. I've decided that proceedings can continue. Going to go for it. He's completed it. Lifts his back to the dressing room. Mark Taylor stands, his captain. Probably his finest moment, his eighth Test match century, his second against the West Indies, and his first in the West Indies. Raises his back to the Australian supporters. And now he's going to speak with his brother, shake hands in a matter-of-fact manner. This is different to a, a hundred in the backyard of mums. There's the Australian flag, and this will mean so much to Stephen Waugh. Hey. He's been under a tremendous amount of pressure throughout this tour. It's a wonderful achievement for him. He'd only played two test matches previously in the West Indies, despite being Australia's second most senior player. Get him! He's gone. Mark War is out. Caught around the corner. After one breathtaking moment for his brother, Mark Waugh, who's played the innings of his lifetime, is out of Hooper's bowling. Another one of those deliveries that pitched in the rough. Got a bit of bounce, a bit of turn. Love, pad, and Jimmy, Richard, Jimmy Adams again doing the job. It's 4 for 3 or 4 Australia. Here he goes, Mark War after a truly wonderful innings. Bit of an ugly time for batsmen. In the stage, you're starting to try and keep negative thoughts out of your head, try and not worry about getting out. nothing worse than getting out in the last over of the day I tell you no matter how many runs you made so the last ball of the second day of this fourth final and decisive cable and wireless test and Australia end it with a lead of 56 with six wickets standing a position which is almost entirely due to a fourth wicket partnership of 231 before the closest pair in international cricket, the War Twins. Well, what a spectacular board for the Australians after a series dominated by the exploits of the bowlers, suddenly the batsmen fire. 
and it was Mark Waugh with a magnificent 126, splendidly supported uh, by uh, his older brother Stephen with an unbeaten 110, a partnership of 231, and only the second time that they've been involved in a 100-plus partnership in Test Match Cricket. A wonderful achievement by them. And of course it was the West Indies took a real hammering with uh, their Walsh with 2 for 65, again the best of the bowlers, Ambrose 1 for 48, other than that there was not much joy at all. So a wonderful day indeed for the Brothers War and David Hooks took the opportunity after to speak to Mark about his tough day at the office. Yeah, I mean to make 100 against the West Indies in Jamaica is, is probably a good a test you can get and... Uh... It was a good wicket to bat on, but uh, you know, you're always in the back of your mind. You know they've got four fast bowlers, who, you know, who can bang the ball in and uh, can get you out any ball. No, a lot of short pitch bowling today. Uh, uh, the law as it stands, the one over the head, it doesn't seem to be very consistent. I'm not blaming the umpire, but just it must be a difficult one to umpire. Yeah, I've got a sore back from bloody leaning back all day. I must admit, yeah, it's uh, that, that's the way they play their cricket. Um, they're definitely hard to score against when they're flying through here. Uh, but they win games like that, so you, you can't expect them to bowl too many half volleys. Now, what about uh, batting with your brother? Uh, only one, as I recall, one previous century stand in Test cricket with Steve. There's been plenty of speculation that perhaps he should bat at six. He doesn't uh, bat too well with you. But will you put paid to that today? Yeah, well, that puts that theory uh, behind us. Uh, we, we've had a few good partnerships. Uh, we made 464 against the Wackers in Perth one year, and we're fa both fairly aggressive players. And if we can get going, then you know we can score runs quickly, and, and that's what we did today. Well, a priceless opportunity for Stephen Waugh to build further on that splendid foundation laid by Mark Waugh. What a wonderful hundred that was indeed by Mark Waugh. And also young Greg Blewett, who perhaps was struggling to live up to his rave notices before the tour, had another chance to prove his mettle. Well struck. Just eased it down the ground for the first boundary of the day. Well struck. That was a stroke full of authority. Four from the time it left the bat. His second pull for four off Ambrose. As I mentioned earlier, a feature of his batting, or his two test centuries to date against England, was his pull shot and hooking. Another example of it there, just perfectly in the line. Well, welcome to Sabrina Park, Kenny. Two consecutive cover drives to blue it, a three and a boundary. safely and there's his 50 raises his bats tips his cap some Australian supporters underneath the Southern Cross it's in the air but he's placed it well behind square well out of reach of Benjamin. It's four for 396. Very good running again by Steve Wall, realising Courtney Walsh has not got a good arm, and it brings the Australians 400 up. The boys are in Australian flags. What did we do there? Well taken, he's got him. Keith Arthurton has broken the partnership with what really was a long hop. Greg Blitt got back and gave it everything and a good catch by Winston Benjamin. Two-handed to his right, breaks the stand. This is amazing how often this happens. Part-time bowler, short of a length, Greg Blitt gave that the kitchen sink and Quite a good catch there at mid-wicket from Wilson Benjamin. The only man in that area. Keith Arthurton strikes a vital blow for the West Indies. Tremendous innings there from Greg Blewett. 69. Here's here the shot. 
pulling it very firmly into mid wicket. And that, that is a very good catch because he's hit that very, very hard. And unfortunately for Greg Blewett, straight to the man at mid wicket. Got that very sweetly. He was really digging it out, one would have thought. And that's a glorious shot. Steve Ward just pushed at this. Just a little forward defensive. And he's just timed it really well. Firstly, that's a good sign. He's got a very good bat. And secondly, that just the timing. It just shows if he plays straight enough, long enough, and these short boundaries, particularly straight, that you'll go for four. He's probably actually enjoying getting on the front foot occasionally to the West Indies now. There it is. 150 for Steve War. Lifts his bat to the crowd again. Michael Slater leading the applause from the rooms. There, the Frank Worrell Trophy, we are going home, says the Optimists. But there may have been a banner like that that was launched at Adelaide Oval in 92-3. It would have been taken down fairly promptly. Gone. Healy is out. Caught a slip by Lara, lunging forward. Benjamin, Winston Benjamin strikes to the relief of Richie Richardson. You see in here, he just went a little bit hard with his, with his hands. The ball just shaped away a little bit. But Lara's just got beautifully soft hands, just falling over. And Healy's out for six, and Australia six for 433. Good aggression by Benjamin. Two aggressive figures confronting each other there. Very dramatic picture that. Some Benjamin just making sure that Steve Waugh knows that he's still in the game. Oh, Jimmy Adams has taken another curler. Well, you couldn't see any better than the first one when he caught Mark Taylor. And James Adams has done it again. But he certainly makes them look easy at times, Jimmy Adams. This again was not a ball lobbed off the bat. It was flicked off the hips. And Jimmy Adams sneers another. It's 7 for 449 Australia. too happy with that blow. Well, we'll just have a look at this in the, the replay. Well, I can't quite see what the problem is unless he's sort of twisted something. Uh, so we have to play that ball. Oh, that's, that's hit him in the ribs or... Closer look here, it's lifting delivery and oh, that's hit him on the elbow, yes, of the, of the back arm. He's we see him wearing a uh, an arm guard in the front arm, but just missed the bat and bang. He's driven that handsomely. Rifle. No slouch as a batsman, as you well know, Skipper. He's also playing for East Lancashire and has done a fair bit of batting as well in the leagues. And just smacked that through the covers. Yes! And still they're pounding it in. And still Steve War gets off the ground and defends. That's his highest score in Test Match Cricket, 178.
finishes off the partnership in the most spectacular fashion you can want. So Kenny Benjamin picks up his first wicket, Australia lose their 8, 500 and 23. Well, the crowd are jubilant. They've been waiting for a long time for a wicket. And here you see Paul Rifle played outside this one. Now Australia have progressed to eight for 522. Caught easily. No, no finger to be broken here. Brian Lauer taking a comfortable catch at first slip. Two wickets now for Kenny Benjamin in the same over. And Steve Waugh remains on 195. Now he's brought the field in, Richie Richardson. And that could go for four. There's a long chase around for Kenny Benjamin, who's picked it up rather late. They could run for here. Kenny Benjamin is not the fastest of fielders in the West Indies team, and they'll come for the fourth, which will bring him up his 200. What a magnificent effort. One of the greatest moments in his career. We've got Australians running out from everywhere here. A standing ovation here at Kingston. Sometimes it's a bit of a shame here when the crowd comes out to congratulate him, but it's better off when the crowd's staying off the ground and off the wicket and giving Steve Waugh a bit of air and take the applause from the crowd. And it takes so much away from the moment of the batsman when they're coming all over the place to congratulate him. Appeal and he's given. So Steve Waugh is out. Stood there to wait for the decision. And Kenny Benjamin picks up the last three wickets and Steve Waugh goes caught by Lara off that bouncer for an even 200. Australia 531. Lead by 266. And the West Indies will have another 15 overs to back to see out the day, perhaps 14. But what a fine innings by Steve Waugh. Last man out came in with Australia struggling at 73 for three and leaves with them all out for 531. Well, Richie Richardson, definitive Richie Richardson. shot of the match you don't hit them any better or any more sweetly than that we're well, talking about vintage Richardson this is another indication of that and he's hit that very hard and high and bang that's six runs and it's going to be happy that he didn't hit that lower as David Byrne at that pad The breakthrough that Australia so desperately wanted this evening, which is not getting to the pitch of the ball, and the ultimate suffering, Horton Bowl. The Australians are absolutely ecstatic with that. The breakthrough they wanted. The ball just seemed to be drifting down the leg side, but Richie Richardson just got to that a little bit early. Maybe it held up on the wicket a little bit. Put it straight back to Paul Rifle, and he's got the safest hands in the business. Makes no mistake, and Richie Richardson departs for 14. Score one for 37. Oh, he's hit straight in front of him. He's gone. What a sensational breakthrough for the Australians. Rifle. And he's being engulfed by his teammates. 
played back, it stayed down. About Carl Liebenberg, had no hesitation. Lara is out. Well, that ball kept very low and hit him pretty much in line. The question is, did it pitch in, that, in line with the stumps? Well, that is debatable. It certainly would have hit the stumps, but I'm not too sure that it did pitch in line with the stumps. Anyway, it's two for 37, the West Indies. He's played on, and Stuart Williams is out. Rifle being mobbed again by the ecstatic Australians. Well, we have had a few three-day test matches, but I don't think this one will be three days because there isn't enough time left, but the West Indies certainly aren't staying at the feet very long at all. Stuart Williams there playing a long way away from his pads, the ball hitting the inside half of the bat, back down onto the stumps. Three wickets down for the West Indies, 46 on the run, on the, the scoreboard. Just out of reach of Tyler. Went very, very quickly. Just wide of Taylor. It's three for 58. Well, a match-winning day for Australia. Steve Waugh's 200. He was rewarded by being Australia's best batsman and the double century certainly topped off his series. Greg Blewett, at last, some faith from the selectors. 69 and the tail wagged slightly. For the West Indies, not too much to write home about about their bowling. Three wickets apiece to Walsh and Benjamin. The most interesting aspect, 59 overs from the spinners. But after that innings, there was plenty more drama in the last hour of play as Paul Rifle gave Australia an undeniable chance of winning the Frank Worrell Trophy. Of course, he took three wickets right at the end, including the two superstars, Richardson and Lara. Well, the next day was a rest day and there was plenty of rain about and that caused some apprehension among the Australian players and the coach Bob Simpson, who in fact ordered some extra security for the covers because of course we had that bizarre situation in Antigua during the second test match. Well, fortunately the Australian players woke up on the fourth morning and the sun was shining, but the pitch was going to play an important part as to whether the West Indies were able to bat out the day or in fact just give the Australians some sort of total to chase. Let's go to the middle now for Michael Holding's pitch report. Now this pitch has deteriorated quite a lot. I'm not accustomed to seeing the Sabina Park pitch looking as bad as this. The footholds on both sides of the wicket are looking quite bad. Outside the leg stump, outside the off stump for the right hand, both of them are looking very, very rough indeed. But that's not the only problem. Right here in front of me where I'm standing, there are a few holes in the pitch which are in line with the stumps. These certainly will come into play quite a lot. And as you can see, actually there are pieces of leather that have chipped off of the ball in these cracks because of the hardness of the wicket. I think batting on this pitch today is going to be very, very difficult. Back fielding by Blewett. The Australian feeling as usual, high class. Very good stop this by Greg Blewett. Well, Australian feeling as usual, up to its high standard. Steve War. Keeping the pressure on. Australia in a commanding position, but they have not slacked at all. Continuing to concentrate, continuing to put pressure on the West Indian players. Gone, brilliantly caught. Stephen War. Full length to his right, a wonderful catch in the gully, ever alert. And this man really is just having the match of a lifetime. He picked in one, Mike. He has changed the whole course of the match and also the series. Athletic skills, sure, try to glide it through the vacant area and slits, but don't worry whether that bounced or not. That's right into the mitts. And now the West Indies are four for 98. That run very well indeed. It's four. Well, Shane Wong won't mind Benjamin doing this a few times. 
hopefully one will really bounce to Shane and he'll take the top edge. But he, it's his only answer is the sweep. And he rolled it. And he got one in the middle for a change. And it's gone for four. That's his 15. Waited beautifully. Lovely way to bring up your 15. He signals the room. That's brought the crowd to life. The night watchman who can go on and get 50. He's got a test best of 85 against New Zealand. Once got 100 against a uh, touring Australian side for Leicestershire. Come at the moment, come at the man. And this has been a very, very good effort by Winston Benjamin. Confident appeal, he's given him. Buckner has given him. And Benjamin is out. Be interesting to see this one in replay. Benjamin. Ball swinging in. The big thing is whether or not it would have hit the stumps. And if anything, it might have hit leg stump. It might not have. But near the breaks. And he's played fabulously well for a very good 51. And now the West Indies are 5 for 134. think he's out Taylor's run to Julian they're confident Carl Liebenberg has called for the third umpire to make the assessment in front of his monitor well the Australians think he's out Julian bent down athleticism picks him up throws it in off the wrong foot Hits the stumps, and he's not really into the picture at all. Clean hit. Ian Healy had to do. And he's gone. Run out. And now that just puts unbelievable more pressure on this man here, Keith Upperton. But Hooper has run out. Fantastic work from the Australians. They worked very hard in the field, throwing the ball at the stumps. Bob Simpson would be very happy with Finally, something's coming off in the field. Brendan Julian running flat out, one hand, on the wrong foot, throws it in, one bounce, and hits the stumps. And Carl Liebenberg asks the umpire, the third umpire, and he's given out. Carl Hooper run out for 13, 6 for 140. Well, that's uh, a stand-up home run at Yankee Stadium. And this is... Uh, same as the picture would man it, waist high, just outside the plate. This is a full toss. We haven't seen too many of those from Shane Warne. But that was very powerfully hit indeed. It's a pretty long way to that boundary at long on. Ah! Well, a big appeal again. And he's given him. And he's turned and hit the back leg, and Keith Arthurton probably feels himself a little bit unlucky. Well, the Australians are very, very happy indeed. That's the last of the recognised batsmen for the West Indies. Not too happy himself, Keith Arthurton. But this ball pitched way out in a rough and spun a long way back. It was heading towards the stumps, but I'm not too sure it would, it would have reached the off stump. But it's 7 for 166. In the air for a long way, but uh, lovely timing from Ambrose. Well, he just stood his ground and waited for that one to spin back in towards him. And hit it powerfully through the offside. As I said when he was coming to the crease, Kurt Ambrose certainly has the ability to stand up and bat and make a few runs. Just cert certainly hasn't shown the application to do it in the series before today. 
Almost stumped. And Warren has dragged him forward. Ambrose premeditating the delivery and the, where it would land. And Ian Healy, who hasn't had his best test day, did that beautifully. Healy Sheehan Warren again. He has struck. And as I said before, Kurt Ambrose certainly has not shown the application in this series. And there we go again, chipping down the wicket, driving unnecessarily. 8 for 172 of the West Indies. Well, the Australian singing Warney. And Paul Shane, who comes from Ian Healy. Walsh, one of Jamaica's favourite sons. Oh, that's a superb stroke by Courtney Walsh. Steve Waugh special. That's a crackerjack shot, this. Off the back foot. That could have been a little bit of Rowan Canai in that shot. Coach has finally got something through. Nineteen fifty-five, of course, uh, a pretty good year for Australia. That's a magnificent year, Tony. A great vintage and. Uh, Ben McGrath getting a few late uh, shorts, short ones in there to his nemesis, Courtney Walsh. And Courtney Walsh, a great favourite here in Jamaica, of course, and they love him. Another good short one from Glenn McGrath, who hasn't taken a backward step during this series. And Courtney Walsh, <laughs> not too sure what you'd call that, Tony. He's quite happy with the way he played it, obviously. Well, that must have been close. But as far as umpire Liebenberg is concerned, not close enough. I suppose he's enjoying Courtney Walsh as well. Gone. Oh, he's put it down. Unbelievable. Ian Healy has now put down two of the easiest catches you could want. Thick outside edge into his gloves. He had to catch it. Well, I don't know what to say, Tony. That was quite amazing. It appears to be a regulation chance. Maybe put up to him. A lot quicker than he expected. For the second time today, um, regulation catch was grasped. It's uh, something we haven't seen two or three years from Ian Healy. He's been outstanding behind the stumps. That's a superb on drive. Using his feet and coming down, playing it perfectly Courtney Brown and getting four for it. That shot again, using his feet, catching the ball on the rise with the leg spin, right in the meat of the bat, four runs. Now they must be feeling there now, particularly Bob Simpson, of course, who was here as a captain in 64-65 when the Australians lost 2-1, and again in 77-78 at such a troubled time, lost 3-1. Got that on the full, and he's got it away for four. Still something for them to cheer about, and the children signal, mimicking a more senior Jamaican in Steve Buckner. Who says you can't use your feet to Shane Warne? Down the wicket, a little bit in the air, gave it the treatment, high and wide over Steve Warp for four more. Good to see him still playing shots. 
it's in the air. Blew it's under it and he's taken it. Got the wicket to Shane Warne. Courtney Walsh tried the big one over the top and hit it straight to point. And for the people at home, the doubting Thomas is about sunglasses. This is one of the reasons why. Get a fly ball, and see the ball, great camera work there. And of course, he's looking straight into the sun there. And he's just checking the glasses there. But Courtney Walsh just caught Blood, bowled Warren for 14, and the West Indies are 9 for 204. And so Warren strikes again. Courtney Walsh, who was so solid. And the last West Indian batsman. Here's Courtney Walsh now. Just waves to the crowd who are giving him such support, his home crowd. And how heavy will his heart be this moment? So the Australians now, just one wicket away from a historic achievement. Kenny Benjamin joins... Courtney Brown on 30. Taylor. Indicating through Michael Slater for the security men to reposition themselves. Shane Warne doing the damage again his best figures for the tour believe it or not oh. and this is one of the reasons why he has his best Courtney big slog try to hit over mid off just lent a bit too much on the back foot hit a fly ball to, to blew it with the sunglasses on sun was right in his eyes that wasn't an easy catch no doubt the ball would have been spinning a lot before he got underneath it I tell you, Mike, sometimes you have your heart in your mouth when those are coming, coming down too, and everyone's expecting you to catch it. He's got that one away effortlessly out in front of the Kingston Cricket Club for four. This is a great shot by Ken Benjamin. The drop kick just against the spin, up and over the mid wicket boundary. The team camaraderie and the team spirit between the two of them, Brian Lara, of course, and Justin Langer, which is a great sight to see. This is the way cricket should be played. Very good winners the West Indies have been, but also very good losers. And he's gone! And that's it, and it's been caught by Taylor. How appropriate is that? Warren, everybody gathering to hug Taylor and Warren. Simpson, what a moment. The Australians running on to the ground. Alan Border there. So proud he must feel he built the side. And now Taylor has engineered this great win. Great scenes of emotion. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sure how many people out there can hear me, but um, today I have to be the most proudest man in world cricket. It's been far too long since Australia have had their hands on this trophy. I feel very honoured that I'm the captain of a side that has finally won this back after some 20 years. To my players who can't hear me, but to my players, it's been an outstanding job. We've had an outstanding job. It's been a great side. We've had a few setbacks. We've, we've, we've put together a great cricket team fought back and won a great trophy. To the West Indians, to Richie Richardson, once again they were a fantastic opposition. They've been without a doubt the best team over the last 10 to 20 years. We've finally, we've finally beaten them after many, many moons. To them, thank you for the competition. I've enjoyed the series immensely, as have all our players. They've been a great opposition, a great side, and I'm sure you'll do, do more than yourself justice in England this year. The supporters behind me, they've been outstanding. The faxes from home, all the people who have sent faxes, messages to all the guys, we thank you very much for all your support. This, this is for all of you. This is for all of you. Um, to Coca-Cola, 
our major sponsor, thank you again. Without you, this is impossible. And once again, thank you. I'm a very proud man and a very proud Australian. Thank you. Well, what a moment. And the scenes of excitement, the jubilation, a very, very proud day in the life of Australian cricket, more importantly, in the life of Mark Taylor, of course, only seven months into his reign as Australian captain. And how proud he must be and how proud he must be of his men. Well, it was going to take a very brave man indeed to get into the Australian rooms. Uh, David Hooks was just that brave man, and here he is with Brendan Julian. Brendan, congratulations. So just uh, two and a half months ago, you were uh, in Melbourne, ready to play a Shield game. Yeah, dead right I was. Two and a half months ago, playing a Shield game, but it's, uh, it's been a great win here today, and oh, I think this is just the best time of my life to, to, to win over here. I know it's, it means a lot more to like Simo and Babsy and, and players like that that have been here a few times, but for a guy that's been here for the first time, it's just been magnificent. And you must be pleased just the way you played cricket. The, the four tests you played, uh, you struggled a bit in Guyana when you had a bit of jet lag in the one day, but after that, it's just all fell in place. Yeah, yeah I was pretty happy with the way it's come. I mean. I think, I think we all sort of hunted in packs the way that we bowled and we to bowl about under sort of 260 all the time was just a bonus. I mean, I think we all chipped in and did the things that uh, got us the wickets. Brendan, enjoy the night. Thanks, mate. The man of the series, Steve, congratulations. Fantastic series. You made the point at the start of the series you wanted to make this your series. You only played two tests here in 1991 and suddenly you must be very proud of yourself. Yeah, it's been a great series. I couldn't have dreamed that it would have gone any better you know, personally and for the team. We've played, shown a lot of courage and commitment during the series and it's, uh, it's been a great victory. You know, the best I've ever been involved with. Steve, everything seems to have gone well. I spoke to you earlier in the tour, you felt that you were hitting the ball well, you were scoring at a good rate, which is your trademark, and you are able to maintain that. And I, it's going to sound silly, you made 200 here, but I thought your first innings in Trinidad was something special. Yeah, it was probably the best things I played on the tour, but uh, you know, I've been hitting the ball pretty well, but I had a little bit of luck along the way. I had a couple of drop catches went my way, and fortunately I cashed in and made the most of them, so yeah, I'm pleased with the way I've played. Well, Steve, we have to let you go because uh, Carl Rackham is driving your car around uh, Sabina Park. What do you think? Well, I think it's in safe hands, mate, yeah. <laughs> All right, good luck. Right, Enjoy the night. Then let's go to Paul Rifle, whom I believe had a wonderful series. Perhaps wasn't rewarded with wickets until late on the third night. But he's got the Frank Warhol Trophy. Paul, congratulations. Thank you very much. Mate, what about this morning? Uh, Hills told me the lesser keeper wouldn't have got to that second delivery. <laughs> mate, I bamboozled him by the first one and did a bit. Oh, no! <laughs> well, the man in the series is entitled to do that. Uh, what about your bowling this series, and particularly this game? You got the rewards this game. Did you bowl any better? Uh, probably not. Uh, it's just the way it goes. Uh, but obviously you've got to keep going, and uh, I've done that. Uh, I've probably done that all season. And uh, you know, this is the reward for that. Well, they deserve this. An unforgettable moment, a moment frozen in time. A disciplined, single-minded and focused Australian team which carried all before them. David, it really was a joy to be a part of that. Yes, it was, Mike. Always a joy to be part of history, particularly when Australia is involved. The Australian players played sensationally. They were wonderfully led by Mark Taylor and the series was billed as the heavyweight championship of the world. Mark Taylor believes that Australia has dethroned the West Indies. Well, let's close now with a tribute to Australia's new heroes. <laughs>